friend of mine has tackled a crazy project to build a rally car model from each year across a 40 year span of competition. Graham Marnie is an experienced modeler. He's done a lot of awesome builds and not just rally cars, a stack of different types of aircraft, military and a whole bunch of other stuff. But he's now acquired all of the kits and aftermarket parts to complete this project. He has now built eight of the 40 models, so there's still 32 kits to go. If you hang around, we'll show you what's in those kits, what's good about them, bad about them, and a whole bunch of aftermarket product that he's acquired to get the project done. The World Rally Championship started in 1973, but Graham's project commences with a model from 1970. I'll let him explain why. Rally cars are something that has you know, been in and out of my life for a long time, um, since 1970, really, which was my first interest in, in rally cars. The, um, 1970 World Cup Rally London to Mexico, uh, I mean 25,000 kilometres, uh, pretty good uh, effort today, let alone back in those days. I wanted to, um, I wanted to get a, th you know, I wanted to model over a theme. 40 years of rally cars, uh, that's a good one, you know, that's, that's a good chunk to try and achieve. Um, so yeah, 1970 through to 2009. Doesn't mean to say I'm going to stop at 2009, but there's, uh, you know, you've got to put a staking around somewhere. I've got a kit for every year, one car in particular that is not in there, which is the car which started or which was the, the Mark I Escort. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mark I Escort's in 124 scale. Um, there's only one manufacturer of bell kits, and they're out of production at the moment, and they're really unobtainable unless you you know, unless you exchange gold bars for them. Of the ones that I've built so far, certainly the, uh, the Nunu slash BMAX Lancia S4 would be my favorite one to date. That's the one that I probably spent the most time in super detail in, completely um, ducting out and cabling out and piping out the engine bay and everything because it's just such a big engine uh, bay that's visible in the rear hatch area there. Yeah, so that would have been to date probably my favourite in terms of um, what I've done to it. There's a good variety of, uh, of kits in the stash that I'm certainly looking forward to uh, more than others uh, because there is a mix of uh, older uh, older mould, uh, 1980s era mould, Esky uh, base kits. Well, they are certainly less detailed, and so you've got to make the decision of how much effort am I going to put in to make this something which you know I call presentable. And fit issues. They can be a challenge, um, and an and accuracy. So you know, how far do you go away from the kit to try and make it as accurate as you can? Mind you, some of the more modern kits have uh, failings in those areas as well, but they're just generally more crisply moulded. I didn't want to just have a collection of shiny, pristine, um, you know, cars that look like they've just been driven off the showroom floor, or you know, rally cars get dirty. And uh, you know some of the most evocative pictures that you've seen, uh, or I've ever seen over the past 40 years, have been uh, you know rally cars covered in dirt and mud. I have a couple of cars with drivers in them, so I will make diorama bases as well for those particular cars with the drivers in them as well. No point really doing a diorama without the drivers, and you know, not all, not many kits come with drivers these days. Um, but you can source drivers separately. Some are. I have drivers, it doesn't necessarily mean that the driver and, and co-driver of that particular kit will end up in that particular car. <laughs> uh, that could be in it. Snow could, snow could feature, um, dust um, from um, a desert could um, feature in one as well, um, mud from an English forest. Has already featured in the car, but not uh, on a diorama. There's four cars uh, which will be um, driven by women. Um, Michelle Mouton, uh, that's, that was actually what the Audi started actually part, getting the Audis was the, the Michelle Mouton connection. I did see uh, Michelle at one of the 
It's either Earl's Court or NEC Motor Show uh, back in the early 80s. There was Audi Quattro there. She certainly um, shook up some of the uh, the male egos of the era. Um, but uh, the other the other thing is going back even prior to that, um, there was actually a rally team set up in 1971 by French dentist, um, and it was the Septagil uh, brand, and and they only had women in their complete driver setup and uh, co-pilot and co-driver setup. So yes, I have a uh, yeah 1971 um, Alpine will be in Septagil colours. No, that is correct. Um, look, I built, um, I think I built six rally cars last year. I am still working, but at some stage during the next five years, I will retire. I think the completion date will be, be dependent upon the retirement date. <laughs> Good question. It might be 50-50 or it might be slightly uh, more, you know, 60-40 or something. A lot of the kits don't represent a car from the, the year that I want. So potentially the same car uh, could have been used over a couple of seasons. Uh, now sometimes there might be differences between the, you know, the body for one year to the next. So I do have some update sets for those. A lot of the older kits, the decals are shot. So I do have aftermarket decals for either the same or a different marking for the same vehicle. Some of the kits will be out of the box without any aftermarket. Others will be more aftermarket than, than base kit. <laughs> Safari Rally. This car dropped out early on in the piece uh, after uh, damaging its rear transmission due to the fact that it had three punches simultaneously. It was the winner the year before. Um, so this is the typical Hasegawa kit with beautiful instructions. We've got some window masks for the glazing. In here we have antenna. We have some uh, little flaps which go above the, uh, the bull bar. Seat belt material, mud flap material, um, some mesh material. Photo etch wipers and also photo etch uh, for the seat belt buckles and some pedals. Beautiful cartograph decals. The um, typical Hasegawa slash Tamiya uh, tyre decals as well, but there's some spares there as well, so that's good for the spares pile. Beautiful um, moulded all terrain um, tyres. Some white metal bits uh, for the snorkel, the bull bar, the underbar tray, and little searchlights that go on by the, the wing mirrors. That's aftermarket. No, no, this is all in the that's, box. That's all this is kit. all part of this kit. Yeah, as I say, this is this is you know this is what Hasegawa can you know, can do for you. Um, lovely one-piece body shell, nicely molded. So put that back there, and and yeah, clear glass parts. in a separate bag. Yeah. All the rest of the bits. So yeah, that will be, so that'll be built completely straight from the box. Everything that is needed is in there. Now, part two of the um, tale of two Lancers. We have Lancer Evo 7. Um, this uh, is by the French manufacturer Heller. Now this says it's the Lancer WRC01, I'm actually doing it for the 2002 year. One of the interesting things which I've since discovered is the, the nose art on here actually depicts a late spec 2002 bonnet with the air intake on this side as opposed to that side, but still has the 2001 front spoiler on it. So that's a bit of a concern, but it doesn't really matter too much because when you get inside and open, the kit, you'll see that the intake is actually on the other side, so opposite opposite side to the photo. So that was um, that was a disaster averted. Um, so I'll just move those to one side for now. As you can see, the instructions a lot more basic, and in terms of kit parts, well, I had to put the glass back into the bag because it was 
all mixed up with the other stuff and you can see there's not that many bits and yeah and then the decal set itself very translucent um, yeah uh, so interesting um, design they have for the wheels which sort of you're meant to somehow put the brake bits in between and then you can't see through so I'm not sure how that's going to work but anyway so yeah um, quite a bit of work to do um, no seat belts or anything like that so how are we going to solve this issue okay well, in this particular case uh, Reggie models have an upgrade set specifically for this uh, model um, which will work on the grills and everything so I will have to uh, drill out all of these grills and everything but I do have the the mesh to go behind those um, it's got wiper blades seat belt buckles and everything so I've just got to provide my own seat belt tape um, so that should certainly liven it up a bit and then on the outside as I say I wanted to do a 2002 because I've already got a 2001 and that was first rally car I ever built about 10 years ago for Focus. So um, Renaissance um, decals came to the rescue. Also has the actual Marlboro uh, sponsor decals which are not in the Hella kit. So um, yeah beautiful set of decals there. Um, so we've got the Marlboro uh, markings everything else that's required plus also it gives you the wing mirrors the correct wing, sh wing mirrors and also the GPS video GPS antenna and the video marking uh, which go on the top there which are not included here so this is accurate for a early 2002 which was the Monte Carlo rally so yeah so hopefully with the the photo etch the nice decals um, ingenuity on the wheels I'll get something that will be a pretty good representation of a 2002 Lancer Evo 7. Now that's not a rally car. Yeah no. Nah. Uh, funny you should say that. Um, it will be. This will be the rally car. This um, yes this is this kit is actually the BMW M3 um, touring car this one will actually be um, as a rally car it will be this one from 1988 the um, we call it the spa uh, in the bastos colors because it has in here all the parts including spare seat and everything to turn it into the rally car version so all is not what it might appear to be on initial inspection. So this isn't another one of those new new kits that you're impressed by. Yeah, this is yep, yeah, this is um yeah, new new Aoshima um plats or you know all that group. But yeah, this is a yeah, very good kit um because it does contain all the bits to make either um you know the full through exhaust on a touring car or the shorter exhaust version which come out the side pipes for the rally car um, yeah uh, this one will just just have the um, say the, the other bits which have got in here so the resin bits with the the extra seat um, different shock absorbers for the different ride height um, all the interior fire extinguisher and everything um, yeah so that will turn and I think it's got the instructions also to um, change the yeah to, re to remove certain parts of the roll bar which weren't uh, in the um, in the rally version so So I do source a lot of my uh, bits from Spot Model, which is a um, shop in Spain, which um, I do a lot of my ordering from. But I'll end up ordering, um, you know, ten or twelve different items at the same time, and that way the postage uh, you know, becomes quite reasonable. 
This BMW, on the other hand, from 1975, will just be straight out of the box. So, keeping on with the German theme, um, this one took me ages to get because it's long out of production, and there are other versions of this kit being re-released, but they don't have the bits for the rally. But this was the uh, rally version of the Porsche 911. So 1973, but it was raced in the 1974 rally. Um, okay, so lovely nine, early 911 rims. So yeah, this is for the G, these for Jimmy kits are really nice. Um, I'm really looking forward to actually building this one supposedly go together very well. I have added um, an aftermarket decal set just because these decals were a little bit uh, on the yellowed side but also they didn't have all of the um, sponsor markings in there like the Coca-Cola for example weren't on there. So there's Coca-Cola goes on the uh, rear spoiler uh, just there. And they didn't, I think they didn't have the KN ones as well. So there's, they were missing some markings from the kit. Yeah, the, the big KN transport organization were not on there. So, yeah, we have those. So, yeah. So, we, yeah, we go 1973 Porsche from the 1974 Safari Rally. And moving on to the beginning of the collection, we'll start off with the the car that might be the uh, might get the um, the short straw if I can find an escort, but this is what starts all with the again Safari Rally, Hasegawa kit, um, just been re-released recently. Um, except these are 1999 decals, so it could be an interesting one. But yeah, typical Hasegawa fair with a bit of photo etching there, and I do have a couple of. Drivers, which might not go into this one. But, um, so that's that. And then, probably got to be, I reckon, one of the most tail happy rally cars ever would be <laughs> the Nissan 240Z uh, in uh, 1972 Monte Carlo Rally Guys. So, again. Um, Standard Hasegawa fair, you got some mesh, nice, nice body, crisply detailed, far too much chrome for my liking, but that's beside the point. Um, yeah, 2018 these decals, so nice and uh, white, I'm not sure about the uh, seatbelt decals, but uh, there we go. Peugeot's here. To a, a four or five for the Dakar rally car. That's the Lotus Camel Yellow, so that will be sprayed from the uh, rattle can because that is really the only, unless I go to a zero paint, which uh, I've got the rattle can already. But again, this has got the um, photo the photo etch update set. I was lucky. Um, you know, this has been out of production for years. I got this one from. Um, from Japan and it actually had the camel decals in it whereas a lot of them don't if you even look at the box art it doesn't have any cigarette marketing on it um, but so I've got those and they're, they're fairly good condition maybe a little bit of yellow in uh, but nothing that the uh, few days out in the sun won't uh, solve whereas this one will be completely uh, straight out of the box. It's a Tamiya kit. So Tamiya Hasegawa, very, um, you know, very much straight out of the box is all you need to do with those. Some beautiful um, decals, carbon fiber seat belts and everything. I've already built one of these, um, which was the 1999 version. This is a 2005 version. So again, different spoiler, different bonnet. It's got different wheels. Um, a lot of other features. Oh, and then we've got a Hella 307. 
Oh uh, dear, so what's happened to this one? Well, apart from the fact that it's got a um, throwaway paint set in it. Um, this is going to get, this is going to get a photo action resin set. This is not going to be in these decals. I'll find what it is actually. Where have we gone? Oh, maybe it is. No, it is. Yes, sorry, it is. Yes, it is going to be in these decals, which I'm going to try and use. If they don't work, I will source some other ones. But yeah, um, the only um, convertible that was ever used in the World Rally Championship. Because oh, this is from the uh, 307cc, so you know the the folding back roof car that you you know seen on the road. Yeah, so they actually made a World Rally car. Peugeot decided. Okay, yeah. so Sierra. I do actually want to get a um, another one of these for uh, for, for the touring car. Uh, these are again uh, rare as hen's teeth. I was lucky to get this, uh, but uh, it was bought knowing that the decals were shot, and uh, also there was a half a drive shaft missing. But I think I can solve that problem. So um, yeah, as you can see, the decals were the decals were pretty uh, pretty grungy. Pretty crispy. So, however, I do have a a, a update set, a resin update set, uh, with different wheels, um, spare, yeah, pair of dri pair of driver and co-pilot seats, and um, same tyres will be used. Uh, it's the same size wheel and tyre combination, just a different shape wheel, uh, sorry, different style of wheel, um, and um, I do have new aftermarket decals with sort of some photo etch um, wipers. So yeah, that will be that will be done and converted into the rally version of the uh, Cosmos Sierra. It will still be in the same Texaco markings. Yeah, yeah. But it'll very similar, but it'll be uh, uh, it'll be the um, yeah the rally version. A few Subarus, yes. Um, currently drive a Subaru, so um, yeah, a bit, bit of soft spot there. Um, this one. But Subaru started with the they started with the Legacy or the the Liberty. Um, again, the decals were pretty much sot, and also the decals don't include the uh, sponsor markings. So I've included I've got an aftermarket set with the sponsor markings. Also, I have a different set of wheels because uh, in this particular rally they ran the eight spoke wheels, not the seven spoke ones in the kit. But the kit does come with um, seat belts and all of that good stuff so that'd be nice and easy the other ones not really going to be standard Subaru colors we've got a 99 so we've got the two-door and then we've got a blob eye and a bug eye or a bug eye and a blob eye I'm not never really too sure the 2001 and the 2005 this one is going to be in rather interesting uh, markings, which I quite like. So I want a bit of colour in there as well. Just had a slightly different headlight uh, selection as well, so I've got some aftermarket headlights to suit there. The 2001 will be in these markings, which was raced in 2003 by a pole with an unpronounceable name. Um, so, yep, that looks like a nice uh, colourful thing as well. Again, I've just got some correct wheels for that one. And then 2005 will be actually a yellow one. Um, as raced by um, Gareth Jones and JCB markings. So... Something different I wanted to do. Escort, Cosworth. Um, again, old kit, decal shot. Um, they're never going to work. So uh, decided that it would be in these markings. 
think are rather attractive from 1995 Rally Catalonia. Um, also with some very attractive uh, multi-spoke wheels, which I think are nicer than the standard kit ones. So yeah, looking forward to doing that. Um, but again, to me a fair, so it's not gonna have any other aftermarket added to it, um, just the wheels and the decals. This, on the other hand, Hasegawa, but it is going to have complete detail up detail set um, with multiple sheets of photo etch in it. It has a different set of rims and tires. Uh, it's also got a set of seats winging its way from Italy at the moment. And it will be in the classic Martini markings. 1982 Lombard RAC rally. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That might get some extra work done around the body, uh, around the engine bay as well, just like the, um, S, the Lancia S4 did. This one, again, second hand. Decals were shot. You see, the, they're meant to be white, but it is going to be in these colours, which I think are rather stunning. The Valvoline colours, it's a beautiful decal sheet that. So, yep, built straight out of the box. Um, it comes with seat belts and photo etch buckles and everything. Theatre bath, um, it's just going to be built straight from the box this, but the bar, he, he said bar the correct uh, tail light assembly. This is one of those that really old, uh, you know, ex esky, um, very basic, just like the Escort was, but re-released with a beautiful um, cartograph uh, decal sheet. Um, hopefully they will behave when they go down. Um, bell kits, this is the only bell kits kit I have to date so far. Opal Manta. Um, this is a lovely kit. Um, the body kit does come, the body shell actually comes in its own little box, which is very nice. Very nicely detailed, very nicely um, moulded. Um, Comes with, um, interestingly, comes with the options to either make it left-hand drive or right-hand drive, um, depending on which one you finish in, and different headlights as well. You've either got um, the older rectangular ones or the laid around ones. Actually, the rectangular ones are going to be donated onto an Audi, but that's another story. Um, the kit itself does come with um, the photo etch and the material for the seat belt buckles. So that's all very nice. And uh, this one is actually going to be finished in Rothman's colours. So a 1983 Manx rally winner of uh, Henri Toivonen. Yep, so that's that one. So we've done those Peugeots. Now, ah, yeah, let's get on to um, the Alpines, the Renault Alpines, because we do actually have three Renault Alpines here. Two from our good friends, um, Tamir, and one from Heller. So, um, yeah, so we'll start off with the, this one. This is the one which is going to be in the Aceptigil colours. So that's basically white, pink and red. So red roof and white and pink car and with the decals. Um, this next one going to be the 1990, sorry, 1976 version uh, as raced by Michel Mouton uh, for the Christine Loire brand and so that some, they'll be in blue with some different markings on it and there's a little bit of um, resin in there just because it has different bumpers so this has different bumpers and wheels to the other the other one which has the same body 
And then we have the 1973 one, which is the Hella kit. <laughs> Talk about a big box and a little kit, but this is the wide body shelled version. So it's got the wide wheel arches. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of space in this box. So I should be really, uh, really disappointed in what they've done. But having said that, do get a nice decal set and it will end up as this multicolour uh, blue, white and red. And I do have a three colour zero paint set for those colours. <laughs> I think this original kit is from the 80s, but it has been reboxed recently. So um, you yeah, have to go on scale mates to get the exact yeah. year, but I believe it is. The plastic is just like those other Esky kits, it's mid 80s. So, it, and it shows, but it's the only way in town to get a wide bodied Alpine. Okay, moving on to some um, Japanese Toyotas before we go back to some, actually no, we'll, go, we'll, we'll stick on the French stuff for now. Stick on the French stuff. Um, Moving into, two, I think, 2007 and 2009 will be the Citroen Zara's. Um, again, so this one is going to be done as the 2007. Um, and I have got trans kit for the bumper, tail, some nice decals, and a photo etch. Um, updates it because it's a hella kit <coughs> and then I have fun I had fun sourcing these as well that was half the fun mm. because I had my list of what I needed to get and I had for each year I'd have a number of options and then as I put, got one particular kit then that would narrow <laughs> the options down and so in the end it got quite hard you know getting the last couple because I you know I was narrowed down my options Again, um, you, you've got all of the aftermarket that you believe you need. I have, yes. I've also been collecting all of that as well. So this particular one, same kit, slightly different plastic. It's got one of those um, not to be used paint things in it. Look, I mean, even <laughs> even mould the uh, wiper blades into the body. Yeah. But so this one, this one is actually going to be quite interesting. This is going to have, this is going to be um, Peter Solberg. Um, and it's going to be a snow version. So I've actually got some um, snow tyres, little spikes on them. Um, yeah. And so those kit decals not going to be used. So again, one I'm doing, you know, one I'm doing with the um, PE update, one without, just you know, sort of compare and contrast type thing. Um, I don't think I, yeah, I don't think I've got the, I don't think I've got a PE in there for that one. Again, memories uh, serving. I've been collecting these over the year, so, yeah, over the past year or so. So, Toyota Celica. I've got a couple of Celicas here. Um, one's a '91 ST165, ST185. Different models, different body shapes. Uh, this one is going to be done in 1992 markings, uh, Tamoil. Um, haven't seen any of those before. I already had a 91 car, much as I like the FINA markings. Um, these ones as well, so yep, yeah, they look like they're nice crisp deckle, so they should go down well. The rest of it will just be a standard build. When I say standard build, I am at liberty to add seat belts. <laughs> 1994, um, in the SO markings, so um, you know, most of these you'll see in the Castrol markings, but again, I've got Castrol coming in on the car below. <laughs> so again, go for something different. So we've got the, again, completely out of the box. Um, this one even has the seat belt photo etch and everything. So yeah, that'll just be a straight out of the box build. And talking of Castrol markings, we have two Corollas, tailor two Corollas here, one's Tamir, one's Hasegawa, slightly different. Uh, one will be built out of the box, which I believe will be the Hasegawa one. Yep. 
This will be a um, Safari one, Safari Kenya. And the decals, and you can see that that is still white, so that's always a good sign to show that the decals are still in good condition if the white is white. Um, comes standard with seat belts and, and everything. Interesting thing about the um, Toyota uh, Toyota Rally cars, the, the Corollas, when they race the Corollas, um, they had a different different side marking on every rally, which was representative of the rally. So you've got the zebra stripes for the Safari. This one here is um, whatever one it was, which I've, might have been the Spanish. But it's not going to be done as that anyway. Um, but yeah, it had the, uh, like the flamenco dancer. Uh, yeah, Catalonia. Yeah, so yeah. Spanish. So it's got the flamenco dancer. Guess what they had for the Lombard RAC rally? Umbrellas. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is the Tamiya one. Uh, it comes with the masks, but I am actually going to do it in different colours, which are going to be from a 2000 rally. Um, and it's just going to be in you know, the Fina markings. So I've got the Fina ones. So, yeah, slightly not as pink as it is on the decals there. But, uh, yeah. So, again, so this is the road rally version. So, lower suspension. Um, bigger rims, lower profile tyres. And finally, we are going on to the two Mitsubishis that we've seen before, which we started with. But we have another Mitsubishi, which was the uh, Gallant VR4. And this is from the uh, Thousand Lakes Rally. Um, yep, so just the standard car kit, out of the box. This is a, a re-release. 2020 version see the date on the decals 2020 so that should be fine uh, photo etch and buckles and everything so it's a Mitsubishi's entry into the World Rally Championships uh, prior to the Lancers and finally we have the two remaining Audis that I have in my collection um, we have two evolutions of the Sport Quattro so the Sport Quattro was the short wheelbase version so the one I built already, the original Quattro was a long wheelbase version. Um, then it went to the long wheelbase version with the flared arches, as opposed to just expanded wheel arches. Then they chopped a number of centimetres, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, out of the car to make it a shorter wheelbase to make it handle better. Unfortunately, with all the engine over the front of it <laughs> and the increase in horsepower, it was a bit of a challenge. Um, but anyway, so we've got, we're going to have two versions of this, both driven by Michelle. Um, this one will be, will be, will be, will be in the classic Audi, um, Audi yellow and white markings. So when she was in the 1984 uh, RAC rally, um, which is the H Audi HB team, HB being another brand of tobacco. Now for this, I will be adding a detail up part, uh, which is the actual one which comes from Nunu. And also a different set of wheels and tyres. So it'll have the gravel wheels and tyres as opposed to the kit ones. So again, just beautifully slide moulded, lovely um, one piece body shell, crisp as lovely. And these will be a pleasure after building the uh, the first one, which was the old, which was the current Italeri boxing of the old uh, 1984 Esky kit. And then just because this car wasn't radical enough in its final guise, it went completely mental. Um, squared off the arches, even bigger rear spoiler. Um, this one, which comes in the uh, the yellow and white markings, will not be in the yellow and white markings. It will be in the markings of the car which Michelle drove at the Ulster Rally, which will be in a white one. So, quite attractive that. So, yeah, this will just be completely just a straight out of the box build, plus seat belts. So, and then you can see that the completely mental. body shape of 
the aerodynamic aids they had to try and put on the car to keep it on the ground. <laughs> so there we go. The collection of yet to be built. probably in my second sort of stint of modeling I, I mean I, I built a bucket load of models when I was um, when I was young uh, until my late teens and then other things got in the way but I really sort of got back into modeling after 2001 2002 time frame so just over 20 years ago yeah um, Cold War British Phantoms and Vulcans, US Navy jets, grey white with colourful markings, Second World War fighters, the Warbird, the rally cars, Formula One cars, touring cars, Group A, DTM, GT production, aircraft at 48 scale, occasional series of airliners, competitive cars, put some competition markings on it and uh, yeah I'm interested. Okay, it, will, it will go well into the three figures now. I don't have all of them, uh, some of them are in museums in various places around yeah, Victoria. I donated a selection of about 12 or 15 um, Royal Australian Air Force uh, ones to the Moorabbin Museum. Uh, the Vietnam vets down at Philip Island's got a couple of um, couple in there. A couple of been done as sort of commission build and you know, sold off to people. Oh, probably about 120 at the moment. Yep, yeah, yeah spraying, spraying these. Um, I use a variety, <laughs> anything ranging from guns and to mere acrylics and sort of the, the main base paints uh, for a lot of the, um, you know, just the interiors and exteriors. I'm trying to start to get more into lacquer paints because they go down better. Um, but again, it just depends on the colours. There will be some will be done from uh, spray cans. Um, again, just because of those particular colours come uh, and whether or not I decant them into the airbrush or I just spray them straight on, that just depends. Clear coat, I'm kind of half tempted to go to 2K but the health implications and the safety requirements for 2K, I think I'll probably give that a miss. Oh, I have found that you have to be a bit careful with some of the uh, clear coats, it can be a bit hot, especially the lacquer ones and some of the thinners. Basically with my clear coats what I'm doing is I'm basically putting on light coats of um, either Tamiya or um, Guns acrylic with just the acrylic thinners to start with. Then I, after I've got a couple of coats down I'll then probably go to the, the acrylic with uh, self-leveling lacquer thinner and then some polishing afterwards as required. 
Uh, much as yeah, much as I'd like to go to to 2K, I, I, the safety you know, is basically uh, airborne super glue. <laughs> oh, Adi Quattro has got to be favourite uh, because it, it was just such a quantum leap. No, unfortunately, there are a few that had to miss out just because I couldn't keep in with the theme of a different car for every year. I, I could drop an Audi Quattro for a Metro 6R4, but would I? <laughs> I mean, other people might say, yeah, do that, but it'd be sacrilege in my mind. <laughs> I think one of the things that will, will come through, um, you know, when we look at this at completion is the evolution of the uh, you know of motor vehicles over over that 40 year period but it still amazes me that i think the most futuristic looking car in that is the uh, the one i got from 1977 uh, which is the lancia stratos that's just you know, i don't think even today a car as uh, futuristic of the, as looking as that as the you know made it onto the roads